We're in White Sands National Park. This is your first time being in New Mexico. Came from Bisbee last night. It's about a five hour drive from Bisbee to White Sands, which is the longest stretch in our entire road trip. But we drove in last night and we got here this afternoon. I think that White Sands is a pretty small park. We <laughs> talked to the ranger in the visitor center and asked if he recommended any hikes. And he basically recommended three. Um, three out of like five. <laughs> There's like five hikes total. Okay, there's five There's five hikes total. The longest one is five miles long, but he was like, unless if you came here specifically for that, I don't recommend doing that because mm -hmm. you're hiking five miles in like shifting sand dunes and there's 1500 feet elevation gain. In sand. In sand, which honestly I've done before and it's not fun, so. <laughs> what else? Bring sunglasses if you come here. I don't know where mine are and it is incredibly bright. It's like snow bright, you know? Bing, are you getting snow blind right now? Yeah, my eyes are like hurting just existing. We can walk back to the van and get your sunglasses. I don't know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep walking around though. If I look down, it's fine. Something that I thought was really interesting is that these dunes stay very wet. Like there's water just a few inches below the surface and you can actually, if you're like playing with the sand, you can very easily get to like really wet sand. It's like almost like you're at the beach. I feel like we could have built like a sand castle or something. Yeah. So that's really cool. Also, if you like geology or rocks and minerals like I do, this sand is made out of selenite, which is really cool because I have selenite at home. Slash, do I have some in the van? Probably. Probably. I'm sure I do. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Temperature is 51 degrees. It's very foggy. It's windy. Windy. But we're in Carlsbad Caverns now. We're in Carlsbad Caverns. It's our second national park. I don't remember which stop this is. Tucson, Tombstone, Bisbee, White, White Sands. Sands, Carlsbad. So five. Okay. Five stops. Wait, so this is stop number five? Yes. Stop number five. <laughs> we think Nugget would appreciate not being brought out here with the wind yes. and the mist. It's too he hates wind. So at Carlsbad Caverns, there's two ways you can get down to the cavern. You can take an elevator down or you can walk all the way down. Either way you choose, you do need to get a permit to go down. Um, if you have a parks pass, it's free. And if you don't, it's, I think it was like 15, $15, but it wasn't super expensive, but you do need a ticket to go into the actual cavern. We're gonna walk down. It's about, they say it's about a 60 minute walk to get down to the big room. And when you're in the big room, it's about an hour and a half walk all the way through. And then you can take the elevator back up. Thank you, so you don't have to walk all the way back up. So we're gonna walk down though, cause that sounds more fun. Does it? Does it sound more fun to you? The elevator sounds really nice, but we'll walk down because we're only here once. But we're gonna walk down. <laughs> um, you have... <laughs> okay. 
so I embarrassed. Wait, that was so <laughs> Yeah, you have granola bar like all over your lip. Oh yeah, they have ranger-led tours of different parts of the cave that you can't access without a ranger. We tried to go on a tour, they were sold out, they only have one going on today. I think that it might be their slow season, although we should probably look into that and figure out like when their no. busy season versus their slow season is. But um, the guy selling the tickets said that since COVID they kind of just don't have enough manpower to do more than one tour a day. If you want to do a tour, which it did look really cool, you have to plan ahead because Get it was sold out by the time we got here. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I think the entrance is that way. Okay. At the little bookstore, you can rent a few of these like little tour mates. And they'll just tell you everything you need to know as you're walking down. There's like signs posted like this. And that'll tell you what button to press. And it'll start giving you a, a self-guided tour. <laughs> idea but apparently like hundreds of thousands of bats live in this cave in the summertime they have this amphitheater here because at night like at sunset all of the bats come out and then at sunrise all of the bats go back in so you can sit here and watch all the bats come in and out they are currently they migrate so they're in Mexico is I think what I read inside they, they go south they're not here right now bats are like one of my favorite animals so that'd be so cool to watch that <laughs> like poop pee. <laughs> down here so it's warmer down here and it's 98% humidity so it's super super humid was Jim White. Obviously electricity didn't exist. So he brought in a lantern, a candle, and built a little ladder with sticks and wire because he was a farmhand nearby and just came into the cave and started exploring it and started holding tours and then eventually it became a national park in the 1930s. That was really fun. That was probably honestly one of my favorite national parks I think I've been to so far. I had zero expectation or knowledge about anything about Carlsbad Caverns. That blew me away. Yeah. If you are in this area of New Mexico and you can go, I highly recommend going. It was really cool to see. Hello. Did you have a good nap? <laughs> you look so sleepy. We're in Marfa, Texas. 
We Marfa. got into, wait, what? Marfa. Marfa. We got into Marfa last night. We went to the Hotel St. George, had mm -hmm. a little date night, mm -hmm. and now we're just exploring the town. We're gonna start by grabbing some coffee. She'll be walking in, in another tin. You are in frame. Am I in frame now? How about that? Okay. We're Marfa! There are surprisingly a lot of coffee shops here for a town of 1,200 people. And we just got done working for like an hour or two at one coffee shop. It was so cute. I took so many photos of it because it's like inspiration for a future house. Yes. I think. I think. We are deciding to go to another coffee shop because there's so many here and be like coffee so we're just we're just gonna do a little coffee tour today everyone that has come here prior to us like friends have mentioned just coffee shops that they've been to and might as well if that's kind of the thing to do here we'll go to another coffee shop i want to go to the crystal shop that sarah recommended we need to go to the crystal yeah, shop that's fine yeah, okay also we didn't say earlier but if you go to hotel st george the drinks are good, it's like a cocktail bar inside of the hotel, but the truffle fries are the best thing. We had a few different things on the menu, but the truffle fries is what a friend recommended, and I definitely say that that is like the standout item. They were really good. I would not be opposed to going back and just getting another order of truffle fries. You can totally do that, I'm fine with that. Country The Americano was really good. We got a vegan coffee cake, which was also pretty good. That's my kind of cow girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I've just peaked in, I'm not, like I don't wear high fashion clothes. I'm not big on like, I kind of wear the same pants like every day. Cause one, we live in a van and two. That's just who you are as a human being. That's just who I am as a human being. I don't need more than like that. So anyways, we're at this sandwich shop in Bordeaux, really delicious. And I went in inside to get a lid, take some stuff to go. And there's two people sitting by the front door. And as I'm walking past them, I hear, hey, look at his blundstones. I'll, sh I'll show you my blundstones in a second. But I think with that comment, I think I just peaked in my hipsterness. Someone thinks that my, someone thinks my rag, raggedy aesthetic is cool. And I, I, I can die happy now. Yeah, people like it, but I thought that was really funny because Sarah has been telling me I need to replace them, but I like them because I think they're kind of cool. They're very holy. It's time, it's time to get new blundstones. Mm. I'll take another scotch She'll be walking in In another tin I ain't gonna miss it Well, there's an old jukebox She'll go dust it off She's all fancy. All right, this is our last stop of this road trip. Uh, we were in Marfa, Texas pretty much all day. And one of the iconic things to do in Marfa is go to the Prada store. That's actually not in Marfa. It's like 30 minutes outside of Marfa in another town called Valentina. And it's actually not a Prada store. It is an art installation. So no one works there. You can't buy anything. I still have never been to a Prada store. So it's probably the closest I'm ever gonna get in my life. You don't need to ever go to a Prada store. I know. <laughs> I'm aware of that. So we're gonna we have check nothing it out. against Prada. <laughs> so 
we're gonna check it out. Take some fun photos and just hang out as the sun goes down and um, head back west. How long is our drive? A GPS says it's just over nine hours, but the van, the van goes doesn't slow. go as fast as other cars. Oh my God, there's a fly. <laughs> The van doesn't go as fast as other cars. And so what, those nine hours are probably gonna be like. 11. I'm gonna say 12 total with like stuff. With like. <laughs> Absolute chaos right now. Like what is happening? Yeah, I would say, I would say like 12 hours total with like stopping, making food. <laughs> We're probably gonna break the drive up into two days, you know? Um, so we'll probably drive to Tucson area tonight, potentially Tucson tonight, or like right up to the border. We don't know yet. We're gonna drive as far as we can tonight. You have promised me Mexican food in Tucson, so. Tomorrow or tonight? Well, just in general, in general. so I'm just reminding you oh. of that promise. Okay. Yeah, we'll probably go to Tucson, get some more Mexican food, because it's really good. And then go to Phoenix. We leave Tuesday, so we have to do some chores and errands before we fly out. How was this road trip for you? It was fun. I think anything under two hours is kind of a shorter drive now, but anything above like three hours or like two hours and 45 to three hours just feels like that awkward length of like, ah, I'm sitting for too long. You know, I like road trips where you drive three hours, you stop and use the bathroom, you drive another three and you're at your destination. I would, I would do this road trip again. I think maybe in a car with cruise control because a lot of these highways are just straight at like 75 and we can maybe go like 65. I would recommend if you do this road trip, which I do recommend this road trip from Phoenix to Marfa, Texas, if, if you have time to spare, don't do it as fast as we did. Basically what we did, we were in a different location every day. And then as soon as the sunset, we were driving to the next location. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. kind of felt like we were always moving. Um, Which is like the spirit of a road trip, you know, I think is that you're always moving. It only allots you like five hours in each location, really six hours in each location. For the most part, in a lot of these spots we've been going to, that's probably enough time. But in some of the other spots, like I would want to spend a couple of days in Bisbee. I would want to spend a few days here in Marfa. I'd want to spend a couple more days in, I don't know. Tucson. Tucson, right. One day was good for Tombstone. One day was good for White Sands. White Sands. One day was good for Carlsbad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. There are two other national parks that are that we could have hit on this road trip. Guadalupe Mountains National Park, which is actually in between Carlsbad Caverns and Marfa. We were driving past it like just after sunset. So if we were gonna go, we would have had to stop and spend the night there and then get up in the morning. We just didn't have the time. And then also Big Bend is two and a half hours past Marfa, which we kind of were going back and forth as to whether or not to go, but we have some stuff that we have to do before we fly out. So we got to get back to Phoenix to like basically winterize the van because it's going to mm -hmm. sit by <laughs> It's going to sit by itself for about a month. Over a month. Over yeah. a month. Yeah. So we got to do all that and find a place for it to park, but I, I don't know, this was a really fun, I thought this was a fun road trip. I like how we did it. Obviously, if we had more time, we'd do a couple more things and spend a few more days in each spot, but I kind of liked how fast we're moving through it. We thought we were ending the road trip video in Marfa. The road trip has not ended. We drove from Marfa to El Paso last night. We stopped in El Paso to get dinner. We realized that something was leaking under the van. Stay in El Paso. We had a mechanic stop and take a look at it this morning. Thankfully, someone was able to like make time. It's a Saturday morning, very last minute, obviously. Came and looked at it. It's transmission fluid that's leaking. He thinks we could maybe make it to Phoenix if we have transmission fluid with us and are topping it off every time we fill gas. So we were thinking about maybe going to Phoenix. Essentially, like the dripping is happening when we park and it's happening faster when we park than when we're driving, constantly losing fluid. We went and got lunch. I noticed it's dripping, called the guy up again. He's willing to come back out and look at it. Thinks it's leaking at the transfer case for the transmission piece of four-wheel drive stuff. He had a guy from a transmission shop then come down and he also looked at it and he's like, yeah, like this is where it's leaking, this is what I can do. Uh, essentially, we don't want to drive the van to Phoenix uh, like that long. It's about six hours to Phoenix from here. Uh, really, it's just a gamble that we don't want to take of like, we could be driving 
and we can make it, or we could be driving in the fluid, the seal fully breaks and we lose all our fluid and the transmission gets to you. The van explodes. It's, it's, a, it's not really worth it, right, in my opinion, to risk that. We have a flight. We're going to a friend's for Christmas. We leave in a few days. We fly out of Phoenix. That's why we decided not to go to Big Bend. We decided to turn around and go to Phoenix. Now that this is happening, thank goodness we didn't go to Big Bend because if we had realized that it was leaking in the middle of nowhere, like that would have been a lot harder and some problems on that. Yeah, we're lucky that we realized that this was happening in a big city. We were like a mile away from an auto zone. So last night we were able to like go buy transmission fluid, top it off. Now we have like a ton of transmission fluid in the van, so. Someone in El Paso is going to fix it. Two people, two mechanics have taken time out of their Saturday afternoon to drive to where the van is at to look at it. Five stars on these guys. That's, I'm blown away by the service. And um, one of them is going to fix it while we are away for Christmas. And then he's gonna keep the van on his property for a month until we're able to come back to pick it up. So that is so lucky of us. And now we have to go get a rental car and pack all of our stuff up out of the van, including Nugget, <laughs> and drive to Phoenix. So that's where we're at right now.